Hi guys, so this is the first build video that I'm putting on my channel. I've been requested to do build videos from friends and subscribers for a while now. And I thought, today's the day, let's do it, let's get it done. Um, the first build I'm going to be doing is the Nomad classified build. Uh, try, I want to try and make my build videos my own. I'm going to be covering all the gear sets, all the classified sets and probably more, like high end or whatnot. Exotic builds. Um, yeah, um, you can't really make a build video your own in the way that it's a build video. There's not much you can do apart from show off your build. Um, but what I have done is, well, what I have done in this is it is fully optimised. Um, so I'll only put up fully optimised builds. So that might mean it takes a while for me to get them up, but they, you know, you will see them fully optimised. And I'm going to try my best. I can't guarantee it in the future, but it is in this video. I'm not going to show you a piece and say um, I've got this on it, but I'd rather have this on it. I'll try not to do that so you know any build I show you I hope in the future as well it's going to be perfect to how I like it I'm not going to want to change anything on it uh, that doesn't extend to uh, weapon mods so much because you know uh, yeah weapon mods are weapon mods I just look for the key um, the key talents on them whatnot but yeah uh, yeah we're just going to get straight into the build really now um, so Nomad Classified let's go through it so what the Nomad Classified does, I'm sure you are aware, once you've got two pieces, it gives you 15% health on kill, which is brilliant. So when you get a kill, you're going to get 15% health back. The free set bonus is Nomad's Resolve, which grants a constant small amount of healing, allowing the user to regenerate all segments of health bar during combat. So when you're out of combat, you're going to constantly be healing, which is great. Uh, set bonus four is Path for the Nomad. So when, when you receive that fatal damage, you are instead healed to full health can occur once every four minutes so uh when it's active and you lose all your health your health's back to full brilliant it's like an extra life uh the fifth piece so the fifth piece bonus is extra health on kill another 10 percent on top of that 15 percent earlier which gives you 25 percent health on kill and you also get improved nomads resolve so this increases the amount of healing from nomads resolve nomads resolve will now overheal so when you're out of combat you don't only get your health back but it's also gonna fill up your overheal which is a fantastic talent it is really good and yeah you you'll see if you're not used this build yet you'll see how good that talent is you always start in a fight if you want to on your terms in full overheal and then the six piece uh, bonus which is even better than the fifth piece you get a 50% chance to have no cooldown for Path of the Nomad. So once your Path of the Nomad drops, you can't use it for four minutes. It's a four minute cooldown on it. Well, this gives a 50% chance to instantly come back. And on top of that, when you do use your Nomad life, you'll take 60% less damage for 10 seconds after it's used. So you know, after Path of the Nomad is triggered. That, I can't tell you how good that is. So you're in the middle of battle with somebody and your nomad life goes it doesn't prop so it goes red and you know you're about a nomad life for 10 seconds you're taking 60 percent less damage that is more than enough time to alter your game plan get out the way get somewhere safe run away whatever that it's a fantastic talent again this build is is so overpowered as people are saying it really is because of the fifth and six bonuses you get there for the fifth and six pieces um yeah so that's what the build does and that is why it's so good you have probably heard loads of people say it's overpowered it's broken the game and all that it hasn't broken the game it is overpowered though but just like the predators overpowered just like the strikers overpowered and just like the sentry and defense are overpowered in pve yeah, i think all the classifieds are overpowered in their own way and i think that's how they are meant to be uh, what these builds do do especially the nomad it allows other players to come into the game and enjoy it more so like I heard so many players not enjoying the dark zone. Um, well, these players now do enjoy the dark zone a bit more. They're able to hold their own with this build. People do complain about it, and they will do forever, saying the game's broken. But I actually quite like where it's at, and I'm even having a lot more fun in the dark zone fighting more people because it's not as dead as it used to be anymore. There's actually people in the dark zone, which is brilliant. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on that. But let's just get into the build. So we've discussed... What the build does um i've had this rolled many different ways i've gone more electronics i've gone more firearms i've gone more stamina I, i've altered it and altered it to find 
the perfect way that I want it for my playstyle, and this is it. I've got firearms at 7,864 that gives me the 411 files of firepower. My stamina at 5,353 with 502,000 toughness. And my electronics, I don't touch with the skill power, which I don't touch. 2,961 electronics, 88,000 skill power. Um, yeah, that's. I'm never going to change this unless they nerf it or change uh, the game in any way. They are, this build staying like this. I use it a lot. And I have a lot, a lot of fun with it, especially in Last Stand. Last Stand, this build. And that's the thing about Last Stand. If you have it like I've got it with the talents, I've got it. Nothing deactivates. As you know, of Last Stand, it normalizes your stats on your classified pieces. So everything drops. Well, nothing drops enough to turn anything off. So all my talents and my guns are always active, uh, which is important. And I really do have a lot of fun in Last Stand with it as well. It's a dark zone, even in PvE too. So let's get into my guns. We'll go through me weapons first. And as me primary weapon, I have the house. Secondary weapon, I have the lightweight M4. If you don't have a house, because I know a lot of people are finding it hard to get at the minute, uh, a Navy MP5 will be just... No, no, won't be just as good, but it's good. A Navy MP5 is very good. And if you, use, you can use the same talents on it. So um, on my house, I run it with deadly and responsive. My play style is to get up close and personal. So responsive, give me that extra 10% when close in 10 meters is perfect for me. And deadly, which I think you should have on every SMG because of the critical hit damage that's already on it. I have 23% critical hit chance. Well, deadly is increasing my critical hit damage by 15%. So I think all SMGs do have the critical hit chance. So that's a must on any SMG really, in my opinion. Uh, base damage is at 22 0.6k and then obviously the house talent card count is on so one half of the magazine does 20 percent increased damage the half which deals increased damage flips every 15 seconds or when the magazine is empty um, so that's my house uh, the weapon mods i have on it i have an extended magazine which has critical hit damage and chance i have a pro red dot sight critical hit damage optimal range and headshot damage Allow vent break, critical hit damage, headshot damage, critical hit chance, and obviously the increased threat in PvE. Um, and then a small grip, critical hit damage, stability, and reload speed. They're the weapon mods that I run on that. Uh, my lightweight M4 comes to 24% enemy armor damage, 19.8k uh, base damage, and I have responsive and deadly on it. So deadly, not as important on an assault rifle, but I still run it because I do have... Quite a bit critical hit chance on it still. And responsive again for the same reason as before. It's my playstyle. Uh, I don't actually use this gun much. I'm always using my house. But as you know, an assault rifle is better at distance. So I do find myself fine at distance. I will quickly switch out to this. Or if I run out of ammo, it's a good backup. My free talent on this is competence. So every time I use a, a skill, I'm getting that increased damage for 15 seconds. And the weapon mods on my lightweight M4. So to make up for the lack of critical hit chance, I've got the high velocity magazine with a 7.5% critical hit chance. Still gives me a little bit of a magazine size with some rate of fire. Uh, my rugged mini reflex sight gives me the 7.5 critical hit chance, 4% critical hit damage, and then the optimal range. I have a loud vent break, critical hit damage, headshot damage, critical hit chance, and a small grip, critical hit damage, optimal range, and stability. Uh, so they're the two guns that I run it with and yeah, I highly recommend running the build with the same at your secondary it's preference really. You might want a sniper, I don't know, or you might want to run two houses, whatever your fancy is, but that's how I run it and I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, pistol, this is something I do highly recommend doing. Uh, blueprint vendor, I got a blueprint for lower gear score pistol. So it's 202. And what that enables me to do is get predatory and cool headed on it, both active talents. And the reason for this is because if I'm fighting in a dark zone or last stand and I drop somebody, I can quickly switch to my pistol and get the melee kill on my pistol, which will then prop predatory. So I get that health over 20 seconds regenerating. And if I was to use my signature skill and I wanted it back, I could go around shooting NPCs in the head to get my signature back very quickly as the headshot reduces all skill cooldowns by 5% and I think that's a very good tactic to use and I advise you to implement it because if you're like me I never used my pistol for anything beforehand and when I have my pistol set up like this 
I do use it. I'm not even going to go through the damage or anything on it because that doesn't matter. You're not going to be going around trying to kill people with it. And also it has one mod on it, which is allow them break. It doesn't matter because I'm not going to be killing people with it. But yeah, for the reasons stated, I do highly recommend doing the same with your pistol on PvP builds for sure. So they're the weapons that I use. And then we go into the gear pieces. So it's the six piece classified nomad. And on my vest, you'll see that I have it rolled to stamina. I've got health rolled onto it, exotic damage resilience rolled onto it and ammo capacity. Now exotic damage resilience, I have it rolled. This is the only piece I have it rolled on. That's for your flame swords, grenades, predator builds that are going against you. Uh, that's going to help towards that slightly and give you that extra tankiness feeling. Um, and obviously health, for obvious reasons. You want as much health as you can get in 1.8, so I roll health on it. And ammo capacity is a must roll for any PvP build. You don't want to be running out of ammo, so that extra ammo capacity is vital. That's why I have that rolled on it as well. The mods that I run on it, I have a firearms mod, 263, with health and another firearms mod 263 with health. Going on to my mask, I've got it rolled to firearms, and then I have critical hit chance rolled onto it and burn resistance rolled onto it. And then the mods I have on that are the 263 firearms with health. And then onto the knee pads, we've got it, well, I've got it rolled to stamina. I've got health rolled onto it. Bleed, shock, and disrupt resistance. So, I think bleed's important on the knee pads. Uh, the knee pads are what gives you the most stats on these, like 33%. Uh, you know, people are talking about how do you counter predator? Well, bleed resistance is pretty decent way of starting. So, I definitely get that on there. Shock resistance. A lot of people are using shock toilets, so that helps get out of the shock quicker. And people are also using the MPs, so destruct resistance. I think this for me is god rolls. You might think differently, but um, yeah, for me, they're the three you want with health and you know stamina. What, what I do on my six pieces, I have four rolls firearms, two to stamina. Doesn't matter which are which, but yeah, this one's on stamina. Uh, the mods that I run on this are Firearms Mod 263 with health, and then the Performance Mod is Support Station Range. Uh, all of my Performance Mods are Support Station Range. The reason for this is I'm, I've got no skill power, I'm not really using skills, but I do run an Immunizer Box. Uh, for obvious reasons, really, if I'm fighting a Predator and I want to get the bleed off, or there's a Shock or Flame turret down and I don't want to have the effect on me, or just for that little bit of health, like dropping it and destroying it right away. And for that reason, I use a support station range because I'm always in a team. The more range I have on it, the more I'm a team I'm going to get in that box and destroy it to give us all a little bit of a health boost. And that's why I use that. Uh, moving on to the backpack. So my backpack is on firearms. I've got health rolled onto it and ammo capacity rolled onto it. And the mods that I use on my backpack are firearms with health and then two support station range 7.5%. And then my gloves, obviously no mods on my gloves, but they are rolled on firearms. I have critical hit damage rolled, critical hit chance rolled, and SMG damage. The house is an SMG. I want as much damage into my house as possible. So that is a must. And then finally, my holster, all maxed out there, firearm stamina and electronics. And I rolled critical hit chance on it. And then the performance mod that I have on it is support station range. So that gives me 30% support station range in total, which is quite an increase. And like I said, if you're running around in a team, I think it's a great tactic. Uh, if one or two of you run a support station just for that reason, just to give that extra bit of help from you. And if we just quickly look at the important character stats, so critical hit chance, oh, 14%. That's on my pistol. We don't use my pistol. Let's uh, reset that to my house. There we go. So on my house, the critical hit chance that I get on that is 43%. So pretty much every other bullet's going to be a critical hit. And that's going to be dealing 116% more damage. I have 62% headshot damage. I haven't really focused on headshot damage. But I do aim for the head when I can. It gives me that extra buff again. 
Um, no damage to elites. It's not PV. It's, I'm using this in PvP, so I'm not too much bothered about that. And the 25% that this six-piece nomad gives me for health on kill, which is very important. A lot of people will roll more into health on kill. That might be a preference, especially if you use more firearms because you're going to be losing stamina. You might want to increase the health on kill a little bit more. But for how I've got my build, health on kill at 25% is perfect. Um, I have no skill power or skill aced. As I've already mentioned, and yeah, they're, they're, they're the important stats really. My uh, bleed resistance is at thirty-three percent. My exotic damage resilience is at eleven percent. My burn resistance seventeen percent, thirty-three percent disrupt, and thirty-three percent shock resistance. All those stats are important if you're using it in PvP. And that is that. Uh, final thing to check the abilities. Um, I run it with a shock turret and an immunizer box as I previously stated so uh, shock turret for obvious reasons if I'm in a fight I'm going to drop a shock turret and it's going to shock them and I'm going to kill them easily so that's why I run it with that I'll sometimes alternate that for a pulse or a booster shot because obviously a booster shot is going to increase all my stats a little bit depending on the type of team I'm against or um, team I'm playing with as well it, it depends a lot the majority of the time I'm running it with a shot to it I sometimes switch out to pulse or um, booster shot uh, immunizer box always stays on that it saved me so many times when I'm low on health and I've got no nomad life I've run out of med kits you know just dropping that and popping it is so important I run it with a green once again this changes all the time depends on the tactics we're deploying uh, I'll normally run it with a green but I might switch to a yellow or a blue uh, yeah but that's those three are what I use the majority of the time. And then going into my talents, um, combat medic is a must. So using the med kit now allies to heal a group member on, on proxies. Like if you're if you're playing in a team, this is just a must. You, you, you're noticing your friend struggling. He's getting low on health. Pop a med kit if he's got none. Uh, give him some health. It's so important. Uh, I have critical save on it. So when I'm low on health, um, I'm last, in my last segment and I... Uh, use a med kit. I'm getting twenty percent damage resistance for ten seconds. Um, if you imagine using that just as your nomad's about to pop, you would get um, so you get sixty percent of the nomad life being used plus that twenty. That's a potential eighty percent damage resistance for around ten seconds. It's going to get you out of any sticky situation pretty much. Um, I use uh, adrenaline. This is a bit controversial, really. I don't know. People say it doesn't work, but I'll use that for the bleed. So medkit now gives you seven seconds of immunity from status effects. So if I do get hit with a predator, I hit a medkit straight away if I'm bleeding. It's the first thing I do, and I don't die. So along with that bleed resistance, along with my immunizer box and having adrenaline on, I find it quite easy to manage predators. I very rarely... I want to say very, very struggle against them. It's a good build, but I, I hold my own. I can fight a team of a predator in uh, with how I'm set up. And then the final talent I use is a fear tactic. So applying shock to any target triggers 30% chance for each target in 10 meter radius. That's just because I'm using a shock to it. So I want to shock as many people as I can. If there's a group of enemies all close together, there's a chance, well, 30% chance that the shock that I get on one of those players is going to extend to another. Um, so that's why I have that. If I wasn't going to run a shot to it, the other talent I would use here would probably be strike back. So reach low health to reduce active skull call, call downs, sorry, skill call downs for 20%. I think that's good. So when you're in, you know, I, like I said, that immunizer box has got me out of the shit so many times so if that's nearly back and i reach low health that's gonna come back which means i can drop it and pop it to give myself some health which might just be enough to run away run out of the corner what now odds finish an enemy off uh but at the minute i have it on uh, fear tactics because i've got that shot to it and that is the bill guys that is everything um let me know what you think let me know how you roll it um how you would do it uh, let me know if it helps you know um it, this is to my playstyle. it might not be to yours uh, if you do watch me on youtube and you like what i do if you think we play similar then this is the build for you i don't think you can get it any better uh, some people would say more firearms 
but I do think toughness is very important in 1.8 and 500,000 toughness is quite tanky. I like it where it's at and I certainly won't be changing this for anything unless the devs decide to nerf it or change the game, um, in which forcing me to change it. It is an absolutely fantastic build. You're going to love it if you don't have it already. Um, and that's it. Um, the next build video that I'm going to get up I've got a couple of builds ready. I've got Sentry ready, I've got Banshee ready, and i got Predators ready. I've got none of them optimised, though. So I'm going to play around with them a little bit more because I'm not a hun I don't think I'm 100% happy with like where Predators is at. Uh, but yeah, as soon as I'm ready, I'll get those builds up for you. Um, if you want to see footage of me in action in the description, uh, I've got a link to, at the time of recording this, it's my best last stand scoring video. Uh, 30 odd thousand I got. And it was with this build. That's a good watch. I'll link that in the description. I'm also going to do a video mon montage of uh, some decent moments with this build, which you can watch as well. And both will be linked into the description. Uh, on screen now are other ways you can follow me and support me. I'm on Twitch, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, so if you do like my videos or this has helped in any way uh, you like what I do please check me out on them as well hit like on this video and subscribe to me please thank you very much uh, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing I love doing this in a minute I love this game I'm going to be doing it for a long time so uh, yeah please give us your support if you can thank you uh, but for now until next time guys thanks for watching and peace out